we're at this juncture where either civilization takes the greatest leap in consciousness or it's our own extinction. The structures are collapsing, this we know, but our job is creating alternative models. We need courage to say things that other people aren't saying. We need to be able to stand up for injustice and to do that in a way that enlists people to be a part of that solution. They are taking seriously both the magnitude of the challenges that we face as a society, as a world, and the promise of what we could achieve together. It's really what we're teaching in a very fundamental way is how to listen and how to love and how to engage and how to motivate people. Well, in the early days of Interaction Associates, we really didn't know whether we were a church or a company. There really was no business in the area of collaboration. And we were successful enough as a company to be able to think about the possibility of starting a nonprofit wing. I had just spent 10 years as a public advocate doing human service lobbying. So it was all about advocacy. I'm right, you're wrong, we're gonna go and demonstrate and advocate. And Thomas was describing something completely different. We didn't know the words at the time, but we felt like we had discovered some concepts that were important to the world in general for education, for group problem solving, conflict resolution. We got a call that there was a project in Northern Ireland that had been funded to create community partnerships, so called peace partnerships and that we're looking for consulting talent to come in and train uh, and, and shape these community partnerships. The critical breakthrough was the idea of a third party neutral, not a mediator, not an arbitrator, but a facilitator who would be a neutral person in a meeting who would focus on process. There's a huge difference between knowing something to be true or even positing that it might be true and getting people to align themselves around it, agree to move forward, and make a plan of action that's going to actually make a difference. Really providing that space where we can find a way of communicating with each other, with a shared understanding, not fixing each other, not telling each other what to do, what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right, really to learn from each other, to create a conversation. Over the years, we've engaged people all across the alphabet, from arts and culture to youth development to everything in between. From peace in Northern Ireland to early childhood education to uh, nuclear disarmament to food systems change, racial equity issues going on across the country right now. And yeah, you can see our fingerprints on a lot of things. Our work is really about collaboration, helping small groups and large groups work more effectively together. It's obvious that, uh, you know, that community matters, and yet so often it seems like we forget it, maybe because of the dominant culture of individualism. But we find time and time again when we enter into these network spaces and you kind of draw a, a boundary around a group of people, not, not to be exclusive of others, but to, just to invite them to turn to one another and say that we have something in common here. We could actually support one another in learning and exchange and making requests and offers. Uh, that magic starts to happen. We try to get them beyond how they're feeling right now, the, the difficult conditions that feel permanent. We try to create conditions where people can take off the armor, take off the guard when they walk in rooms with us and in leaders. And you can just be who you are, and you can offer your ideas from your perspective and collaborate together from that place. Once you get the idea that collaborative leadership is what you want, and you're asking yourself, well, how do I actually do it? Come see us. Because we have tools you can implement as you're working with people to lead in a way that's consistent with the big theories. an awareness of various issue areas, housing, health, education, environment, and we bring the kind of process capacity that people don't learn anywhere else. You know, we're dealing with 400 plus years of, um, of history, 
uh, and then systems that have been built on that oppression, that division, and that inhumanity. We are all living in a society that is deeply patriarchal, deeply racist, rooted in systems of oppression, and we can't just pretend like we have a little island over here that's completely immune to all that. It's a lot to come to grips with that history, especially for those who are ignorant of it, which tend to be the people with the most privilege who are benefiting from the system. So it's about creating space, it's about creating some comfort, it's about reminding people of our shared humanity, and then um, like in organizing, small wins. How do we help people to resist where resistance is necessary? How do we help them keep their eye on the ball around reforming the things that they can reform, the things they can actually make some progress on? You can't fix everything, but you can do some things um, that will make a difference. The idea of love as a force, a true force for change, when lived, my belief, it's how change happens. The belief that this is really a gift to humankind, it's a gift to our society, but more than that, through responsibility. I feel like the next 25 years for Interaction Institute and for our clients is to build those bold collaborations and that bold leadership for change. It's about taking greater risk and putting our egos aside and figuring out what it is that we need for change. I think we have a duty, and I hope we can, and I know we will, to actually think about how we do that around the world. That's what I'd like to see us do.